Hi and welcome to RC Models and this is the second video in the building series for the Bruder Jeep Wrangler. In the last video I showed how the model was disassembled and in this one, having thought about it for a bit, I've decided that probably the best thing to do is to sort out the chassis prep and install the radio. I wouldn't normally do this if I was developing a model but having done it it's probably the easiest way around and to be perfectly honest the absolute key to this build is getting the wiring neatly installed so that the body can fit over the top without fouling anything. So the parts that we're going to install today are going to be the receiver, the speed controller and the steering servo. In order to do that we're also going to need to install a couple of other bits and pieces Firstly, there are three terminal blocks. Secondly, you've got the aerial holder here. And there is a template for the switch, which is actually not a part that was in the original downloads of Thingiverse. So before this video goes live, I'll make sure that I've uploaded it. Just makes it easier to install the switch there. So without further ado, let's get started. So just to recap, we're going to be installing the receiver the speed controller, the servo, some terminal blocks and the blocks which I'm using are around 15mm end to end and if you've got two blocks about 12mm across. Quite important to try and get this little size of terminal block and I think I probably got these from Amazon. I'll put a link in if I can find them because they actually fit in the model better than the slightly larger ones. Part of this stage is also the aerial holder which clips on something like that which is part of the Thingiverse downloads. Okay, so I think that the starting point is to take out this sliding piece here. We're going to want to make sure that it slides slightly easier than it is here. To get this out, you've got a couple of tabs in the front here, and it should just lift up like so, bring it roughly into the middle, and then without applying very much pressure at all, it's easy to come out. This is going to be our first piece of cutting. You don't particularly want the steering wheel linked to the steering mechanism because it just introduces more friction. And these teeth here are what drives that steering wheel. So we're going to slice across the top there and you don't need the whole of this plate. So we're actually going to slice along there, literally just behind this bit that sticks up. So I'll just pop this in a little vise, like so. The first cut up against this piece here. That's that done. We can discard that. And then just take the top off here. We just want it so that it isn't going to be linking to the steering wheel. that while I've got this in the vise I'm going to drill a hole for the control rod because it's quite easy to do that at this point and using a one and a half to two millimeter drill bit I'm just going to drill in the, around the center there kind of aligned with these two shoulders of plastic about there Okay, so that's that done. For the various hole making and cutting that I'm going to be doing, it's actually quite handy to mount the chassis in the vise. You can see here that there are a couple of members moulded into the plastic and that's quite handy because if you do it carefully, you can actually mount it up fairly firmly and I think that for the video it's probably going to make it easier if I'm not waving this thing around. So I'll just put the steering arm back in for now.
and you can probably see how it moves much more freely than it did when it had all of the plastic on the back here. The reason for chopping this out is to make way for the speed controller which is going to go in about there. Let's start by doing the terminal blocks. So here you'll see that we've got six in total and we're going to chop them into twos, chopping quite close to the edge because we're going to want them to fit into some fairly tight spaces. Because the model is fairly tight for space, it's actually worth trimming the tops of these to some extent. So I'll just do the screws up a little bit. And I'll just slice the tops off, probably about halfway down. Okay, so that's those done. Now I'm going to be wanting to put this terminal block about here, but there's a piece of plastic here which is in the way. So while we're at it, I think I'll just take that out. And you're going to want to basically remove this whole piece of plastic here. Now the way that I'm going to do that is first of all to chop it vertically. Like so. And here. And then using a larger pair of pliers, just rock backwards and forwards and out it comes quite easily. I'll just pop that over. So what you're going to need to do is drill a hole just about there. Noting that the front of the chassis is at this end here and the rear is towards this end. And then the terminal block is held into the chassis using a 10 millimeter bolt so I'll just pop that through screw it till it's just sticking out put it over the hole and do it up it doesn't need to be too tight but that should be about okay and the front one is put on in a very similar way. The thing to really watch with this one though is to make sure that you've properly trimmed the side of the terminal block as much as possible because that will determine where you can put the servo. So I'm going to put it up against this piece here. Again using the 2.5mm drill bit, just go straight through. And then just like the other one, 10 millimeter bolt will go straight in there. And we'll be using this terminal block for the motor wires for the front two motors. And then lastly, at the back, we'll be putting one about there, making sure that it doesn't go above the piece of plastic here, because otherwise I think it might interfere with the body. And that's that done. Okay, so that's all of the terminal blocks in place. What we now need to think about is removing the various bits of plastic which are going to be in the way. Now we have a whole area here which needs to come out in order to make room for the speed controller. So chopping roughly, so chopping roughly level with this piece here, we're going to chop here, here and here and then pull out the plastic. So making our vertical chops first, I'll just zoom in. We're gonna cut there. There. 
and to make it easier to get out we might as well do another chop there and we're going to be chopping all the way down from the top there and then taking the pliers this should come out fairly easily it's that one that one and that one and you want this to be fairly flat if you've got anything left over you can always go over it with a knife but that I think is probably good enough for our purposes next I'm going to be making some holes with the Dremel the first one's going to be in this area here and it's going to need to be big enough to fit the plug on the end of the cable from the speed controller so I'll just do that first let's just check the size of that hole that's going to go through easily now the Dremel bit which I'm using is actually a piece which is numbered 561 and if you're interested in getting one of those I'll make sure that I leave a link in the description the next hole is going to be along here and this one you want it to be fairly long fairly big because it's the place where the most wires in the model go through so I'll just do that obviously all of this could be done using a drill bit and knives but I just think it's quicker to be using the Dremel that hole there is about an inch long maybe 25 millimeters and that should be enough to fit all of our wires through make sure the edges aren't too raggedy maybe try it with a knife if you need to but that only took me a few seconds and then up here at the other end I'm going to be making another fairly large hole here to post wires through and just trimming the top off this piece which is slightly further back in order that the wires can pass through and not hit the body which I know is going to sit flush on there Now I've been quite careful here not to go as far down as the piece which slides backs and forwards because we don't want any wires going across here to interfere with the steering. Okay, so I think that is probably going to be okay. If I need to return to it, then I will. Just giving it a quick trim of the knife. I think that I'm happy with that and so I ought to be able to lay the wires over the top without the steering being interfered with but low enough to miss the body when it comes down and I've just realized there is one more hole to do with the Dremel which is going to be around here for the wires to pass through another um, again it's one of those holes that you want to make fairly large because likely to be try, trying to pass plugs through as well oh I think I put a note in when I was screwing this thing in here that actually I've mounted it too high so you need to make sure that it is definitely well clear of these parts here because otherwise the body will not sit flush so I actually had to remount this slightly further along it means that it's a little bit more awkward to get the wires in but if it comes to it, I'll actually take the terminal block off when I put wires in, then screw it back on again. Just before we put the Dremel away, I've just remembered I need to clear space for the receiver at the back. So I think we should go ahead and do that. The first thing to do is to remove the exhaust pipe, which is fairly straightforward. Bend these clips back. There are four of them. Right, so don't worry too much about them because the parts on the inside are actually going to be coming out and then out it comes in the prototype I didn't actually use the exhaust pipe because I was more interested in having power coming out of the back of the truck I'm sure it could be put back in again but these tabs here need to come out so I'm just going to get the big plows on them 
and just and just twist them out. Anything that's left I'll just clear up with the Dremel. Now for the receiver to be able to fit in there, we're going to need to trim off these pieces here and cut out that whole corner and then it will go in and it actually gives us a handy hole to get the wires out for the lighting in the trailer. So I'm going to trim down here and if you slide the knife, obviously being really careful with your fingers, it's actually easier to cut it. Again, some needle nose pliers will just snap out the last bit. Bit left. Just get out as much as you can. If there's anything left, a quick bit of dremeling. And the receiver will definitely fit in there quite easily, but it's still too long, so we need to get rid of that corner. Just before we do though, in order to get the wires from the receiver through to the rest of the truck, we actually want to go through here. Now in the prototype, I actually chopped the whole of these sections out, but in this one, I've decided I'm going to make a hole because it'll actually help hold the wires down and keep them away from interfering with the body. So, we're going to make four holes here, here, and the same on the other side so that the wires can go through. The holes need to be big enough for us to be able to thread through servo wires with the plugs on the end. So, bearing that in mind, we make them as big as possible without actually losing the top. Let's just check that with the servo wire. It's a tight fit, but it goes through. What I'll do is I'll just do the other four off camera because it's going to be the same for each of them. And then we'll move on to the next step. So now we've got four holes and servo cables will fit through all four of them very easily. Now all that remains to be done on the top here is to remove that corner. Again, I'll use the Dremel. Now I did slip a little bit at the top there, but I don't think it's the end of the world. The wires are still held down on this side here. A bit of a shame, it doesn't really matter. This can all be cleaned up with a knife. Just get a nice sharp angle there. It's okay. And I think that that's going to be okay. I'll just check the receiver and you can see how the receiver is going to sit in there nicely, which just leaves us one last piece of dremeling. And that is to cut out the bit for the plug to control the trailer. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this piece here, which is just to the side of the tow bar. I've got the size of plug here, which is from a servo extension lead. So it is that full width there that it's going to want to be. And we'll just do that again with the Dremel, but we possibly won't go to the very edge. We might just trim the edge using the Stanley knife. Let's just check that for width. It's a very tight fit. I'm just going to take out a little bit at the bottom here and that I think is going to be a pretty good fit.
and you'll see that I've cut out a little bit here directly corresponding to it behind so that is going to sit just like that which is exactly where I've got it on the prototype and then the wire will be able to follow around up to the receiver and we will be able to plug the trailer into this and also there will be another plug on top of it rather like that which will be used to power the lights that will be switching on and off in the trailer the same as the rear lights on the truck okay when I said that was the last of the Dremelie it was almost true there's just a couple more bits which I thought of first of all in this area here this is where we're going to be putting the aerial from the receiver through this hole here and it's going to want to go through a corresponding hole in this bit here so I'm just going to slightly enlarge this hole here bring it to the bottom because we're going to want some wires to go over the top of it so it wants to really be as low as possible and then make a corresponding hole here for the aerial to go through when I've done it I'll just put the aerial in place so that you can see what I mean I'll just do that quickly Let's just quickly test that to make sure that it's going to fit. So that's going to go through here and then the aerial will post through and I think that that's going to be pretty good. It leaves enough space for us to put wires across if we want to. And then the other thing is part of this setup really requires the wires to be carefully folded away and put under cable ties etc. And I'm going to want a cable tie to be wrapping around this piece here but I'm a little bit nervous that it might rub on the bottom of the body. So I'm just going to bring this down a tiny bit. And that should be enough. While I'm at it, I'm just going to make the hole for that cable tie, which is going to be at the bottom here. And I'm using a two and a half millimeter bit. I might need to go through the three. I can't quite remember the size of them. I'll find out in a moment. But really as low as possible. So the cable tie will be able to go through the hole. like so and tie up something like that that way I'll be able to pull the wires in nice and close to the edge here and this should keep them below the level that's going to interfere with the steering and away from here where you've got body clips I'll just leave that on I might as well for later just checking against the prototype I did actually, in the end, by the look of it, remove the excess from this piece here. Just seeing if I think that's a good idea. Maybe it is actually because I can't see. I can't see that this is doing a great deal. It does need to go against this piece here. Ideally, you would remove it to there. I think I'll quickly just do that. That seems to be good. So we're going to be able to have wires pass along here. This piece here is still hooking underneath that retainer there, even at the extreme of travel to the other side. And then when it comes across, it's actually flush with this piece here. So we can have wires there even next to it and it won't cause us any problems. Now with the Dremeling all done, I think that, that probably brings me to a natural pause. If this video, when I've finished editing it, ends up too long, this is probably the natural break point if I need to split the video in half. So all of the Dremeling is done, I need to do some hoovering up, and then we're going to start on the electronics. And I think that in the first place, we're probably going to put the receiver in, put the speed controller in, mount the front steering servo and let's see how we get on not forgetting of course that we're going to be wanting to mount the switch for the speed controller because it's really handy to have that in a place where you can get to it easily when the shell is on the model and that you can't see it from the outside when the model's going along